this week at Starbase as work continues on the tank farm expansion in Pad B Flame Trench. High Bay demolition continues. Booster 17 is cryo tested at the Massey Outpost, and we catch a glimpse of what could possibly be a new Block 2 Super Heavy Booster test tank. Now let's dig into this week's update. Starting off this week in the early hours of Friday morning, two separate barrel sections of a potential new test tank were brought out of Star Factory, moved across the ring yard, and taken into Mega Bay 1, likely for stacking. Down the road at the launch complex, work was ongoing with the build-out of the infrastructure for Pad B. Prefabricated manifolds were lifted in the tank farm, and a new section of large diameter pipe for the new deluge system arrived. Up the road at the build site, crews got to work relocating the berry crane and all its parts to the back side of High Bay. By early afternoon, the luffing jib had been reassembled and the crane raised its boom back into the air, ready to continue demolition of the obsolete building. Crews have been making steady progress inside Star Factory, constructing a new end wall for the building to enable the triangular end to be demolished in the near future. Sunday morning, more deliveries of components arrived at the launch site for the build-out of the flame trench and deluge system for the new launch infrastructure. Multiple sections of large diameter deluge piping as well as a very large prefabricated steel piece that looks like it could be the top center support for the flame diverter were among the deliveries. On Monday morning, the booster testing stand arrived at the build site and was parked in the ring yard. A little over an hour later, the Black Buckner crane carried a booster cap over from the Sanchez site as SpaceX prepares for testing on its new Super Heavy. Meanwhile, with the demolition crane now ready behind the building, crews got back to work on the scrapping of High Bay. By mid-morning, a large section of the wall of the former High Bay bar was lifted away from the building and lowered to the ground. A few hours later, a section of the bar's floor followed. Down at the launch complex, two different pump trucks were busy placing fresh concrete, one near the base of the new launch tower and the other over near the new deluge farm. That afternoon, a crane removed the motor from one of the new liquid oxygen pumps at the tank farm expansion. A short time later, a new pump was spotted being moved around the site by a telehandler. Around the same time, the booster cap was moved from the ring yard and taken into Mega Bay 1 for installation atop Booster 17. Demolition crews continued to work on High Bay. As the afternoon wore on, the Barry Crane removed several more large pieces of the upper level of the building. Later, a vertical vaporizer was lifted out of the tank farm and laid down for transport. A short time after, the vaporizer was taken out of the launch site and up the road out of Starbase. A crane picked up the now motorless number 2 liquid oxygen pump and after a short delay, placed it into the number 5 slot. This pump work could indicate that SpaceX saw some reworking was needed after recent testing of the farm. That evening, the chopsticks lifted Booster 14 back off the launch mount following its successful static fire the week before. In relatively short order, the rocket was set down onto its transport stand. Meanwhile, the booster proofing stand was moved into Mega Bay 1. About a half hour later, Booster 17 was lifted off of its work stand and transferred to the waiting test stand. Ship 37's middle liquid oxygen section was brought out of Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 2 for stacking with the already joined upper sections of the Starship. And just after midnight on Tuesday morning, Booster 17 made its way onto Highway 4 and began its journey to the Massey Outpost for its initial cryoproofing. A few hours later, what looked to be a Block 2 Super Heavy aft section emerged from Star Factory and headed across the ring yard to Mega Bay 1. This section is likely to be joined with the two booster sections that went that way a few days earlier, presumably for a new test tank. At the launch complex, a concrete pump truck set up at the flame trench for another early morning pour. The truck worked for about four hours before heading out. With booster 14 secured on its transport stand, the chopsticks were then lowered away from the Super Heavy's lifting points. Crews were back at work scrapping High Bay with another couple of sections of the building being cut free and lowered to the ground that morning. Over at the Massey Outpost, some of the new piling equipment had arrived, indicating that new foundations are in store for the testing site. Back at the launch site, a new liquid oxygen pump was lifted and placed into the recently vacated number 2 slot at the tank farm expansion. Around that same time, another vertical vaporizer was removed and laid down onto a truck for transport away from the pad. 
the liquid oxygen pump in the number 5 slot, which had been previously removed from the second slot, was lifted again, this time being moved out of the farm and set down. A delivery of new electrical equipment also passed by rover and sentinel cameras on its way to the launch complex, likely for installation as part of the new stage zero for the new pad. Meanwhile, Booster 14 was moved across the launch site and back out onto Highway 4. The flight-proven booster then made the return trip to the build site to be prepared for its second launch. Once it arrived, the rocket was staged outside of Mega Bay 1. Back at the pad, the previously removed pump motor was lifted and installed onto the replacement liquid oxygen pump in the number 2 slot. A few hours later, preparations inside Mega Bay 1 were completed and Booster 14 was rolled into the building on its transport stand. Sentinel camera caught a glimpse of some new cladding panels that had been removed from the side of the office end of Star Factory for unknown reasons. That evening, the proofing tank farm at the Massey Outpost was spun up as Booster 17 began its first round of cryogenic testing. Back at the build site, Booster 14 was lifted off its transport stand and relocated to the work stand in the back left corner of Mega Bay 1. A few hours later, the now empty transport stand was brought out and parked into the ring yard. A few hours later after testing began, the frost on B-17's methane tank began to recede as the initial cryogenic proofing wrapped up. That night, one of Ship 35's aft flaps was lifted inside Mega Bay 2 for installation. At the launch site, the last of the new vertical vaporizers was lifted out, loaded onto a truck and driven away from the site. It's not yet clear if these were all removed due to an issue or an out of an abundance of caution ahead of the next launch. Well before dawn, sparks could be seen coming from the top of High Bay as demolition continued. A section was lowered to the ground and daylight showed that a section of the building's back wall was now gone. Later that morning, pieces of the building's bridge crane were spotted leaving Starbase for parts unknown. Over at the Sanchez site, work continues on the construction of the new launch mount for Pad B, with pieces being lifted for installation. That afternoon, Booster 15 was moved out of its parking spot in the Rocket Garden. It was then brought over to the Ring Yard area and staged in front of the door of Mega Bay 2 for as of yet unknown reasons. What do y'all think's next for Booster 15? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Over at the Massey Outpost, Booster 17 began its second round of cryogenic proof testing. This time, the Super Heavy's liquid oxygen tank was filled. Meanwhile, a new liquid oxygen pump arrived at the launch site and was brought through the main gate for offloading. At the Deluge Farm, a large section of water pipe was lifted briefly before being laid back down. After a little re-rigging, the pipe was lifted again and likely lowered into the trench. By early evening, preparations inside Mega Bay 1 were wrapped up and Booster 15 was moved into the building. Back at the Massey Outpost, Booster 17 finished the cryo-proofing of its liquid oxygen tank and was detanked. A short while later, another section of High Bay was removed and lowered to the ground. Overnight, demolition stepped up on the Stargate building, with a significant section of the building being toppled. By morning, excavators were busy loading the scrap into the dumpsters for removal from the site. Later that morning, another section of High Bay was cut free and lowered to the ground. Down at the launch site, more work was underway at the tank farm expansion. The pump sump for the fifth slot was lifted out and moved behind the farm. Later, more equipment was delivered as pipe sections were installed. By mid-afternoon, the pump sump was reinstalled, followed shortly thereafter by a liquid oxygen pump. It's not clear if this was the previously removed one or a new one. LabCam caught the recently delivered center support for the new flame bucket being lowered into position in the Pad B flame trench. Switching over to Florida, this week saw crews begin scrapping one of the old gantry cranes at the docks that have been seemingly taken over in recent years by the space industry. On Tuesday, NASA's Pegasus barge arrived at Port Canaveral and was moved up the Banana River to the Vehicle Assembly Building Turning Basin, where it was loaded with some SLS hardware. Saturday night saw the launch of the Starlink Group 6-72 mission from Launch Complex 40. A few days later, the fairing halves and Booster 1078 returned to port from that same launch. Doug and a short fall of Gravitas departed from the Starlink mission, and Booster 1080 and 1078 were processed and placed on transporters for their return to Roberts Road. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already guys, and we'll see you next week. 
Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.